Now, I'm not saying that there are not white people in this country who are suffering or experiencing poverty. There clearly are. And we should do a whole lot more to help them. And you know, poor people as a society. It's also- See, mm -hmm. are most people in poverty non-white? No. Mm -hmm. So true that often poor whites become the collateral damage of racist policies like the war on drugs. How come he's and not saying that history... though? How come he's just Wait. showing the graphic and not saying it? Because did you hear what he just said though? No, I missed it. Okay, Listen, I was focusing I on him on, showing on the, the graphic gra and not, not right. actually saying, "Oh yeah." Saying that there are not white people in this country who are suffering or experiencing poverty. Mm -hmm. There clearly are. Right. And we should do a whole lot more to help them. And you know, poor people as a society. Okay, let's you know just try. You know what's unhelpful? Often... <laughs> what? Calling them racist. Yeah, I know. Like... I know. Well, and it's funny because they don't, all the poor white people are the people that vote Republican. Yeah. <laughs> Generally. Generally, if you look at the statistical breakdown, so those are the people that apparently are all the terrible racist people. Mm -hmm. But um, listen to the point he makes right here, because it's crazy. Okay. When poor whites become the collateral damage of racist policies like the war on drugs, and that throughout our history, politicians and corporate interests have stoked the flames of racism to prevent the forming of multiracial coalitions built on shared economic interests in order to maintain their power. In oh fact, the creation. Okay. Oh my God. So he just. Okay. So he just said. Wait, 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 there's so much craziness here. That's insanity. <laughs> Yeah. So the first part of the craziness is he just said that white people are the collateral damage of racist policies. Now, you might say, wait a minute, why is that crazy? Well, let's think about this. If the majority of people in poverty are white, okay, and if they're in poverty because of some sort of government policy, would you say the majority of people is the collateral damage? or the primary damage. What's the difference? Because by saying that the white people are collateral damage frames the argument as if these policies that have created oh, poverty yeah, they're, in they're aimed <laughs> are aimed, <laughs> aimed at, at the black, black people. people. I got and you. That the white I got people you. Yeah, that totally. are poor, that's just an accident. Yeah. It's just collateral damage, Adam. Yeah. Even though they outnumber the black people that are in yeah, poverty. Yeah, you would think that that was actually just aimed at the poor people. <laughs> yes. <It's laughs> All like, the poor people indiscriminately, regardless of race. Yes, it's insane. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. This is how you know that this guy's fucking crazy. Yeah, that he's it is decided, insanity. That he's decided that he's going to purposely look through the lens of forcing uh, everything yes, totally. to race. be racist. Yeah, totally. Right. Which is sad. That's like, how, how do you that. fix the problem of poverty if you're only going to look at it through a racial dynamic? You're not. Yeah, exactly. You can't. I, it's impossible. If you want, that's the that's the one clip that if, if you want to encapsulate the insanity of Cody Johnson. Okay. Yeah, it's that was huge. It. That was it. And then the second part is really funny too, because then he goes on to say, "Oh, I know all these Republicans." have been using racial Race, politics exactly. to confuse the poor white people and to prevent them from unifying on the basis of class This sounds really familiar. With their fellow white people. It sounds like a really... Hmm. This sounds like something another party is doing <laughs> like at the same exact time. Well, that's true. But there's another element of this, okay? Who... Did Cody Johnston not just spend 40 minutes railing against the concept of trying to have people in poverty unite under a colorblind idea of working towards helping each other not be in poverty? Did he not just spend 40 minutes calling Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin and Ben Shapiro racist for literally advocating for the fucking thing he's advocating right here and claiming that the Republicans are trying to prevent. Yeah. 
Yes, he did. Fascinating. Fascinating. The creation of American anti-black racism stems from this dynamic. And time and time again, we see that white people opt to maintain their privileged whiteness, despite the fact that it is often not in their interest to do so. When they don't expand med- So there you have it, folks, okay? White people are choosing. They're making the conscious decision to fuck themselves over financially just to keep black people down. Yeah. This is like peak liberal left-wing bubble okay peak left-wing bubble you don't think that's going on such you don't think that's the that's what we're witnessing here you don't think <laughs> no. that's what's driving our elections come on no, Sitch. I Sitch. i don't come on don't. what's wrong with kansas i know <laughs> yeah i yeah i saw i i read that book what's wrong with it's kansas? because of racism oh yeah, yeah. Medicare in the South, in the former Confederate states. When we oh, this is my favorite. This is one of my favorites. The truth is that the notions that we should just be colorblind and treat everyone as individuals are often code words for unfettered cap Wait. individuals that have been gutting like, the social go ahead? whatever. Treat everyone as I lost, it, I fucked it all It's because poll after poll shows it's maternal universal health. Fight the fact that it is often. So I accidentally went to a head where he talks about how bad colorblindness is while advocating for colorblindness one minute beforehand. Okay. Yeah. Not in their interest to do so. When they don't expand Medicare in the South, in the former Confederate states, when we don't have universal health care, despite the fact that every other country who looks like us has it, when we have the lowest uh, rate of union membership, when we have the uh, stingiest maternal leave, like the stingiest social safety net period, is because poll after poll shows if white Americans think that a lot of black people will benefit from a social program, they oppose it. And so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what that person just said mm -hmm. was that the reason, the reason we don't have universal health care or strong unions in America is because white people know it will help too many black people. Yeah. Racism. So oh. this is this. OK, so this is what happens. You have someone knocks at your door mm -hmm. and say, hello, sir, I'm conducting a poll about universal health care. Do you support universal health care? Well, of course I do. I think everyone should have health care. Oh, that's great, sir. Hey, did you know that if you have universal health care, it will also give health care to black people? I hate Ooh. universal health care. I never thought about that. That's a good point. I hate universal health care. I'm going to go put my head in the oven now. <laughs> Bye. Like, what the, f like, what kind of crazy fucking world? Do you have to live it's in? not crazy though because you want like we said earlier like the whole idea behind our political atmosphere now is just to cast the opposition as racist so this is like the perfect yes. argument for casting anyone but against universal health care as racist well i mean i guess you're right it is the opposition because they say well it's the right that is against against universal health care right? yeah exactly and the reason now the they're reason they're against it is because of racism. Black. Yeah, exactly. No, it's perfect. He, it's perfect. You call them I, racist and yes. you don't have to address their concerns right. with the right. policy issue at the same time. It's so it's genius. It's crazy. like evil genius. Oh, my God. I just can't imagine the words coming out of someone's mouth and not immediately being challenged like what the fuck are you talking yeah. about why you drive like especially if you're debating something like universal health care and then all of a sudden you bring race into it it's like what the I, what the fuck yeah i want to know what fucking study she's talking about yeah <laughs> it's like you know well once you tell them the black people are getting help they're like fuck them i want to see that poll yeah I i'm curious that about that poll like who I see who, how answered, who answered that poll yeah. The politicians use this to essentially trick white people into voting against their own self-interests. Yeah, this is literally. Oh man. Uh, yeah, straight well, out of the Who's Kansas that guy you talk movie. about? Yeah, this is literally liberal bubble uh, trying to create the reasoning for why people vote Republican. Yeah. Talking point number one: they're tricked into being racist. Yeah, the old you're a dupe. Yep. So which groups are weaponizing identity politics again? 
The truth is that the oh notion. Oh God! The fact that you are making <laughs> any kind of argument that the left isn't weaponizing identity politics is ridiculous. I know every, everyone's fucking identity, fucking weaponizing identity politics. Totally. And they always fucking have to get yeah. elected. It's like that. We should yeah. just be. Good colorblind and treat everyone as individuals are often code words for unfettered capitalism you know just- <laughs> okay. i know is he gonna so, go off on capitalism no, oh. i just love a minute before this he's like those republican politicians were tricking people into not being colorblind and unionizing as one working class group and then a minute later he's like if you talk about colorblind well that's just code word and dog whistle for unfettered capitalism yeah Nice contradiction. Live and let live, man. Just like do whatever. You know, these ideas are used as a Trojan horse for rolling back regulations and reducing the role of government in our lives. It- See, what did I tell you? Mm. It's the mo- he's literally describing it. He believes that when people talk about colorblind, it's a Mott and Bailey. But he's so fucking stupid that he's instead of attacking what he thinks is the the trojans inside the horse he's attacking the mott he's attacking the concept of colorblindness even though he fucking supports it yeah totally like why wouldn't he support it the alternative is ridiculous being racist yeah (laughs) gutting the social safety net at the expense of the vulnerable and to the benefit of the rich and powerful it completely ignores the central role that history has played in the fortunes of individuals that have been born into groups. Where's the clips of Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan and all the non-Ben Shapiro people <laughs> of the intellectual dark web talking about how they want to cut social safety programs? I want to see those clips. Oh, my right? God. They don't exist. Are you kidding? Sam Harris talking about cutting social security? Come on. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Mr. U- Mr. UBI over there. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That have been unjustly treated by society. You can start to see. What What about Brett and Eric? Oh, my uh, God. The, Eric, the creator of the term intellectual dark web that you love throwing around so much. Okay. And his brother, who's all on the I want Andrew Yang to be fucking. I know, train. Brett, the UBI guys. Seriously. Yeah, They're like, let's Christ. cut Social Security. We really need to stop giving oh money to black God. people. <laughs> 